Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. In this video, we're going to explore Mastercam and how to set up a part. So we're gonna explore some stock settings as well as some other settings that we need to put in place before we can go ahead and begin programming. So that said, we are here inside of Mastercam right now. I just started up a new session and I need to check a couple things first. First and foremost, I have to go up here to File in the top left. And you'll notice this looks a lot like uh, Microsoft Word in the layout. And you're going to look for like configuration down here on the left hand side. So we're going to click on configuration. And you just want to make sure that when we're dealing with this 98431 port, because it was an inch part, we want to make sure that Mastercam is running in inches. So go ahead and make sure that this here for units to analyze measure, change that to inches. And even more importantly, you want to make sure down here where it says current, you hit the drop down menu and then it says inch right there for startup. And then we'll hit the green check mark. So once those two parameters are set up, we can go ahead and open or import or merge a new part. I'm just going to go and uh, go ahead and open a new part. So I'm going to go to file, open, and then I'll have to locate my 98431 part. It's right there. And then you'll notice that when we're trying to look for it, after we've drawn it inside of SolidWorks, it's not directly looking for a SolidWorks part just quite yet. Uh, so it's looking for all Mastercam files. So you'll have to hit the drop down menu here and you'll have to look for one of our uh, file types that we saved out of. So it could be like a SolidWorks part, you could be working into Inventor, or maybe you're using uh, Fusion 360, um, or maybe you're exporting directly as a step file and uh, dumb solid, and then you're importing it that way. But in this video, I'm just going to use uh, SolidWorks files, and you'll notice that my 98431 part has populated in that file folder. So I'll click on that, and then hit open. And what's weird about this is when you're going from SolidWorks to Mastercam, the planes are a little bit different in how they're set up. And I think that's just because of who their parent companies are. So if I right click anywhere out here in the viewport 3D space and I hit uh, top, you'll notice that it doesn't move at all. But if I go to front, it goes underneath the part. So the uh, views are a little bit messed up coming from SOLIDWORKS, but I think that's helpful because when we start getting to five axis programming, you have to cant and kick the uh, planes so that you can actually kick the table. So this is a very good exercise for us as we start to move into five axis programming. So to align these planes a little bit better, we have to then go into these uh, different tabs down here where it says toolpaths, solids, planes, levels, uh, recent functions, and we're gonna go into planes. And we're gonna set up a new plane so you can see here that the top plane, the Z is pointing towards us, Y is pointing up and X is pointing right. Well, the X is right, but we have to rotate around X. So if we're using that three finger rule, we can also uh, correlate that we have X, Y, and Z. We can also have A, B, and C. So if we want to rotate around the X axis, then we have to rotate around the A axis as well. So that's the A rotation. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to move that Z so it's pointing up. So to do this, inside the planes tab, we're going to hit the plus button underneath the word planes here and we're gonna look for dynamic. So dynamic right there. So we'll click on dynamic, and you'll notice that a gnomon is attached to your mouse now. So just like how we're dealing with SOLIDWORKS assemblies, you don't wanna just click anywhere in 3D space. You wanna to try to link this or lock this to its original origin. And to do this, all we have to do is kinda of try to find where that original origin was inside of SOLIDWORKS. We can't directly see it quite yet, but if we use this um, top, left here, or maybe the bottom left if you're looking at it, the top view here. Uh, but that's where the origin was originally located inside of SOLIDWORKS. And if we move our mouse over where the origin was initially set up, well, it's going to wake it up inside of Mastercam, and it's going to link that origin. So you can see how I have that little plus symbol in there. Well, I'm going to click on that once. And then just as I was talking about with that three finger rule, we're going to rotate around the A rotation or the X axis. We'll take a look at this. If we have the x-axis, which is in red, we also have these little segments that are also in red that we can rotate around. So click on any one of these three red segments. So I'll click on this one right there. And you'll notice that the uh, axis is now moving around the x. And if I'm outside of this wheel, 
it's going to move uh, incrementally by you know 0.01. It's going to be an arbitrary value. Wherever you click, it's going to drop. But if you're inside of this little wheel, it's going to move in five degree increments. And what we have to do is we have to tell Mastercam that Z is no longer pointing towards us. It's actually pointing up, so it's going to be negative 90 degrees. So once I snap to negative 90 degrees inside the wheel, I'll click once. Now Z is pointing up, and I can now type in a new name for my top plane. So I'll just title this new top over here on the left hand side in the properties bar. It's also a good habit to uh, set this new plane or this new nomen as your working coordinate system in your T plane and your C plane. So that way when you're programming in the future, you're not going to be messing that up. So we'll hit the green check mark. And you'll see here inside the planes tab, we have WCS, C and T selected for new top. It's also a good habit to uh, select the G, uh, the G code plane as well, so it reorientates it. And then we can start moving into setting up the machine. So make sure that you are seeing this from the top view by right clicking and then hitting top inside of that uh, viewport. If nothing moves, you're looking at the top plane, you're good to go. So then we have to now add a machine. So if I go over here to the tool pass tab, you'll see that nothing is logged yet. And this is good because that tells us that we don't have any operations set up. There's no other geometry that is uh, being pulled with that toolpath. Uh, so let's go over here into the machine tab up here in the ribbon uh, datum tab up here. So I'll click on machine. And then if I hit the drop down menu, uh, I can choose a machine if I have one that's simulated or if I have a post for it. And you'll notice that we also have a mill, lathe, wire, router, and design. There's a whole bunch of machines that Mastercam can process. Uh, in this video, we're dealing with 2D milling, so we're just going to use a standard default mill. So go, go ahead and hit the drop down menu for mill and hit default. And you'll notice now that in the left hand side of your properties bar, since there was nothing there before, it now populated with a machine group one, and then we have a properties for the mill, and then a toolpath group, which is going to then log all of your different toolpaths in chronological order. So if we expand the Properties tab here inside of the uh, Toolpaths bar, I'm going to click on the Files, Tools, and Stock Setup. So I'll double click on Files, and you can see that I have three options here, and I also have three options here. So Files, Tool Settings, Stock Setup. It's the same as it is over here in the uh, Properties Mill Default. You just want to double check here. Uh, we have our tool library. It's set up to mill, inch, mill, inch, mill, inch. All that's looking good. That was just uh, set when we set up our configuration earlier. And then we'll go into tool settings. So we're going to work our way down these different tabs. Um, default program number. So if we want the first line of code inside of that program to read a certain uh, way, it would be like O and then whatever program number. So ours is going to be 98431. And then we can choose what kind of material it's coming from. Uh, it's kind of easy to hit edit right away, but you're going to hit select in this instance and then you get another window here. And in this window, you just have to change it from mill current to mill library. So again, you have to hit that select and then you open up this uh, window and then you go from mill current to mill library. And then you just look for 6061. That's what we're cutting it out of hit the green check mark. That's going to help us with some of the speeds and feeds when we're dealing with this uh, in the tool manager later. So then we'll hit uh, the stock setup next in the tab. And then we have this nice little stock setup page, which is very helpful because sometimes you might not know what size material you'll need. Uh, I get in the good habit whenever I open up a part inside of Mastercam, I will hit all entities and I'll just get a general idea of what the size of material is. So you can see in uh, Y I have 2.5 inches, X is 3.5, and then Z is 0.725, uh, which is accurate to what I drew inside of SOLIDWORKS already. I know that off the top of my head, but if I had some unique shape where I didn't know the extents, this is how I would approach it. I think an even better practice of this is to start off by going to bounding box. So that way we can set up our uh, extra stock material that will be removed a little bit easier. So I'm going to hit bounding box instead, and then it's going to pop up this window. We are just going to click on the part itself so that it selects everything. So you see that the part turned yellow, and then I'm going to select end selection. So you click on the part so it turns yellow, and then hit end selection. And it's going to create this like blue um, transparent box here that's going around the part. And what we can do is we can add material in a certain direction. So over here on the left hand side, we have the bounding box properties bar. 
and I can select where I want to add material from. So if I want material to be on the top of the part and I want to add it to the Z, well, instead of choosing the center, it's going to go you know, one way and the other way uh, from the mid plane. We're going to select the bottom left corner in this little origin box. And then I'm going to uh, select Z and I'm going to type in one. So now that's going to add 275 thousandths above the part of stock material that will be removed. So again, if I had the center of this origin selected of the part, it would then do like a mid plane and go up and down. Or if I was choosing the top left point, it would then go and add material below, which is not what we want. We actually want to remove material off the top for the second operation. And then I'll hit the green check mark. And then I'll hit the green check mark once again, because I finished all of these settings in the files, tool settings, and stock setup. And we should see a red dotted line for our stock material. Now, the last thing that I want to do before we get set up in our tool paths is then to create another bounding box uh, for our wireframe geometry to create the Z0 plane for that face mill to run across. So we're gonna go over here to wireframe up here in these tabs, and then we're gonna select uh, our familiar face bounding box, just like how we used for the um, stock setup. We'll click on bounding box, and then once again, we'll select the part, and then we'll hit end selection, and this time, we're not going to add material in any direction. We're just going to use this as reference because we want the solid rectangle going in all the directions. So I'm going to hit the green check mark. And now I have a reference plane for that uh, face mill to run across, as well as how much material is actually on that stock. So this distance between the red dotted line on the top and then the blue solid line that's wireframe that we just created on the face of the part, that's all going to be removed. And we're going to talk about that more as we go through these different toolpaths. So I'm going to end this video here and continue on with toolpaths in that next video.